What's up everybody? Good late morning and I think it's about time we did another mock draft. I wanted to make that video this morning about our new coaching hire, but um, we're two weeks away now. We are officially two weeks away from the draft and I want to hit at least a few more of these before we get there. So we're going 8.0 today. We are going with Seahawks mock draft 8.0 and once again, I try to bring something at least a little different to the table with each mock that I do. I don't want to reiterate the same general idea every single time. I don't want to hammer the things that everybody hammers. I want to find different approaches that I think would work fairly well. So with this one, I'm taking an approach that I know a lot of people are not going to be too happy with, that I know a lot of people would instantly reject. But I think it's very important that we stick to our guns when it comes to taking a value-driven approach. And I think that some people work themselves into such a little hole looking at draft stuff that they forget that at the end of the day, we need the best players possible. This is not a great roster right now. This is not some roster that is set to go win a Super Bowl immediately. This is a roster that needs help in a lot of areas. So we need the best players, whatever position they may play. So, Mock Draft 8.0, here's how I kick it off. First, I am going to do a trade back. I'm trading back with Green Bay. It's different than our last trade back with Green Bay, though. I'm trading back from 16 to 25, and I'm getting the Green Bay late second round pick in that trade back. So... We move back from 16 to 25, and we pick up 58. So I think that's very close to equivalent value in a trade. On the chart, it's very close. We might have to throw in like a fifth rounder or something, or maybe even a sixth rounder. Maybe there's some other little way we could make this work, but it's close. And at the end of the day, it's not like I'm a stickler for the team, right? I don't care who it is. I just want the end goal of having a late first and picking up a late second. Whichever team is going to enable me to do that is fine. So, trading back with Green Bay. And now I have pick number 25 in the first round. And I am taking Shop Robinson. Shop Robinson, Edge from Penn State University. Phenomenal testing numbers. Good tape. Stats, not really there. Some concerns, but a great prospect. And this is what I'm saying. <clears throat> this is the kind of thing that I hammer on at times. Some Seahawks fans have gotten so lost in the sauce about, oh, guard, 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 that they're going into this draft geared up for that and only that, and they're refusing to look at things through other lenses. And that is such a big mistake. It is such a mistake to think about things like that. And we, as an organization, have thought like that for so long, and it never worked out pretty much. So, edge is a position the Seahawks are, for the moment, pretty good at. But I think they can get better. I think they could get a lot better. And edge is a position where you don't run into diminishing returns for quite some time because of the nature of the position getting rotated in and out, the nature of being able to sub guys back and forth. So Chop Robinson, there are some concerns here, but he's going to have a deadly rush off the edge. He's only 21, should improve significantly in the coming years. The only issue with him really is the short arms. If it wasn't for the short arms, I would say you probably couldn't get him at 25. I would say he would go higher than that. But I'm taking Chop with my first pick. And then I'm using the second pick that I picked up to get Cooper Bebe, left guard from Kansas State. I don't know if Cooper's going to be there at 58, but on the aggregate, he currently is in the 60s. So the aggregate says one thing. I do wonder if NFL teams are going to say a different thing when the actual draft gets here. We see that happen sometimes where the all the experts are telling you this guy's valued here, and then the NFL teams prove they're not buying it. So... If Cooper Bebe is gone by the late second, I wouldn't be shocked. But in the aggregate, that's about where he is, so that's where I'm picking him. It's a great pick. That fills a need and provides good value. 
that's something that satisfies both ends of the spectrum, the value and the need. So I feel like I've done really well at the position without having to spend my first round pick on it. So Bebe going to be the second rounder here. And then I'm bumping down to the third round, and we're taking a guy we just recently had in for a top 30 visits. It's Cameron Kinchins, safety from the Miami Hurricanes, currently being projected around this area in the uh, big board. He is dropping. He had a bad combine, so he's dropping. But I think that the tape needs to override what we see from the testing, and the tape is indicative of a really good all-around safety who I think would fit in fairly well with the uh, defense that McDonald is running. <clears throat> That's not to say I don't have concerns, but, I mean, I have concerns about Tyler Nubbin as well because of his miserable testing, and I would still take him pretty happily in the late first or early second. More so early second at this point. But yeah, Cameron Kinchins, third round pick from Miami. And then I'm bumping down to the fourth round. We're getting Mason McCormick, an offensive lineman from South Dakota State, Really, really athletic, amazing testing numbers. Played pretty well at SDSU. That was a team that actually has quite a few guys entering the draft this year that are probably going to get drafted. Um, he's a very intriguing prospect, somebody who can be developed. He could play maybe some tackle. He could play maybe some left guard. I don't know where he's going to end up ultimately, but he's going to offer that flexibility, and he's going to be really nice, I think. I'm a fan. So if you could get him early day three, I'm feeling good about that. And I feel like after his combine, he's going to be valued right around there. Okay, so next up, another fourth-round pick. We're going Edufuan Ulofushio, linebacker from the Huskies. Great testing numbers. I was looking at him as maybe like a sixth-round pick or so, and then he tested out of this world and I think vaulted himself up, to the, himself up to the fourth. And we need a linebacker. We need a young linebacker to develop behind our top guys this year. Ulofushio is... Uh, I think going to end up somewhere around this mid fourth round area. I really do. I think that by the time the draft actually starts, that's where teams are going to be approximately valuing him. He's fast. He's explosive. He's um, quick. And I mean, he played well for Washington. He did. I just didn't view him in that light until I saw the testing. I was like, wait a minute here. Where is this going? Because it's not about where you've been as a draft prospect. It's where you're going. We're not drafting you for what you did. We're drafting you for what you will do. So Ulo Foshio. Then I'm going down to the sixth round. We do not have a fifth round pick, and I'm getting a running back, Isaiah Davis, running back from South Dakota State. Really nice power back prospect, and I would really like to come out of this draft with a legitimate power back. Isaiah Davis would provide those short yardage goal line reps that we don't really have from anybody else right now. I know people like to say, oh, Charbonnet is a power back, and... I mean, he's certainly more powerful than a guy like K-9, but is he really, do we really want to use him like that when his true skill set is as a third down back? He's a pass catcher and a blocker. He's really good at those things. I want to use him on third down. I want to use him on passing downs. So Isaiah Davis becomes like your your short short yardage back, basically, in theory. I think that could work. I think that could work really well. I um, I think that he's one of the best power backs in this draft. Now, he doesn't have a lot of value outside of that, admittedly, but I think it's value. Another sixth-round pick, and I'm taking another offensive lineman, uh, Dylan McMahon, center from North Carolina State. Tested off the charts. Not quite Bordellini, but actually pretty, pretty darn close to Bordellini. And I think that if we are going to draft a center in this draft, it should be somebody like this. Somebody that we can develop somebody that we can slowly bring along over the course of a year or maybe two years and basically put ourselves in a situation where we're not thinking about playing him in year one because right now the center room, you've got Oluwatimi and you've got Nick Harris. And remember, Nick Harris can play right guard. So there is a scenario where you could bump Nick Harris to your backup right guard spot and have him occupy that, replace Ankrum when Ankrum gets released. It works. It could be okay. And then Dylan McMahon's your backup center. I, I Admittedly, I don't think you're going to carry three centers, but you can twist things just a little bit to make it work. Final pick is going to be Jack Westover, tight end from Washington. Going to be a good H back in this league, I think. Going to be a good special teamer. Um, maximizes his middling talent. Good hands, good effort, 
good motor. Uh, doesn't bring a ton to the table here, but he's got familiarity with uh, Ryan Grubb. So I imagine Grubb would like to get one of his guys back. And uh, he's been a good player for UW over his career. He's there when you need him. You don't need him that often, but when you need him, he's there. So that would be Mock Draft 8.0. Again, I wanted to approach things from a different angle. Um, I am going to do more mock drafts before the draft gets here. And some of those mocks are going to be a little more in line with assumptions and in line with expectations. But I think the prospect of getting one of the premium edge rushers in this draft is something that people are ignoring way too much, especially when the player's good. Like, I can tell you right now, if the Seahawks are sitting there at 16 and Dallas Turner's there, I'm, I'm on it. And this scenario would also make me excited. So be, keep an open mind right now, guys. We need a lot of stuff. We're not a great roster. This is not a complete roster that's just missing one puzzle piece. The whole foundation could be strengthened significantly. All right, I'm out of here. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Um, I will catch you guys soon. There will be more edge uh, drafty evaluations coming out at the uh, end of, at, at, well, not the, at the end of today, throughout today. Keep an eye out. See you guys soon.